Hi, my name is Chris and I'm one of the developers of SALT. In this video, I'd like to walk you through the second phase of its installation. We'll walk through preparing your SAP systems for SALT, connecting them to SALT, and then kicking off the object monitoring process. At the end, you'll be able to start using the SALT apps. If you haven't yet seen part one, in which I cover deploying the SALT virtual machine and performing some initial configuration, it's probably a good idea to check it out first. So, let's dive right in. First, log in to the SALT administration area using the password you set during part one of the installation. Before you can connect an SAP system to SALT, you must first import the SALT ABAP component into it. The SALT ABAP component is a single transport which contains some important objects, all fully self-contained within the RSC SALT namespace, and two security roles. You can download the component at any time by clicking software updates in the menu at the left. Then click the download button next to the ABAP component label. A zip file will be saved to your computer. Expand the archive with your favorite program and inside you will find a readme file and the SALT ABAP component transport data and co files. Follow the instructions contained within the readme file to select the correct transport for each SAP system you wish to use with SALT based on the system's SAP release level. Then ask your SAP administrator to import the correct transport into the main client of each of your SAP systems. Once the component has been successfully imported into each SAP system, you need to also create a communications user for SALT to use. Ask your SAP administrator to create a new user in the main client of each SAP system, for example called SALT. Also set the user to be the communications type. Ensure that the user is assigned the slash RSC salt slash engine security role, and you're done. You can now begin configuring your systems in salt. Back in the salt administration area, click systems in the menu at the right, then click add system. Enter a descriptive name for the system, its hostname or IP address, system number, and client number. Then enter the ID of the user you created earlier, and the corresponding password. Remember that passwords must be entered in uppercase if your SAP system is running an SAP release level below 700. Finally, select development if this is a development system with object version histories, and SALT login enabled if you want to allow the users to log into SALT using their credentials from this SAP system. Click test, and once successful, click save. Repeat this for your other SAP systems that you wish to use with SALT. Next, we need to place the configured systems into a landscape. This landscape configuration tells SALT how your changes flow between the systems, and it is important for many SALT apps to understand where your changes originate and where they end up. Click Add Landscape and enter a descriptive name, then click Save. Finally, add each system you just configured to the landscape, assigning each to an appropriate role. The last configuration step required is to define which object namespaces will be monitored by SALT. Click Namespaces. SALT will always monitor objects in the customer namespace that contains all Z and Y objects. This is usually where most custom development occurs. If you also have any of your own namespaces, that is producer namespaces, that you do custom development in, you can select them too. Then click Save. So, that's it for configuration. SALT now knows which SAP systems to monitor, how to communicate with them, and what their relationships are. Now we can start SALT's monitoring process, which will analyze and index your custom development. Click Control Room in the menu at the left, and then you will see that each system is currently in stopped status. Click Start for each system to begin the monitoring process. The initial build, depending on the size of your SAP systems and your network performance, will take between a few hours and perhaps up to 24. At any time, you can check what SALT is currently doing by viewing the activity log. Also, you can view the statistics to see how many objects and versions SALT has detected and how many have been processed. Once all object versions have been processed and the initial build is complete, this built flag will turn into a tick. 
Let's skip ahead to the end here. So now you can begin using the Salt apps. That's it for part two, and the entire Salt installation process. Salt is now up and running and has indexed all of your custom development. It is also constantly monitoring your systems for new changes to keep up to date. You can now start using the Salt apps to make your life working with SAP a little easier every day. For more videos and other documentation, check out saltapps.com.